on Tuesday, former President Olusegun Obasanjo shot down the argument by elder statesman and leader of the Pan Niger Delta Forum, Pandev, Edwin Clark, over the ownership of the hydrocarbon resources in the oil rich Niger Delta region. In a six page letter to Clark, Obasanjo reminded the Pandev leader that oil, like the mineral resources in other parts of the country, belong to all Nigerians as provided by the statutes. However, Michael Zekome, a senior advocate of Nigeria, jumped into the fray in typical fashion the next day, saying the former president completely missed the point. Ozekome said Obasanjo may be right from a legal standpoint, seeing that he was part and parcel of successive military junters that cleverly and systematically inserted exploratory and inhuman laws concerning ownership of oil and gas into Nigeria's statute books. But this does not make the laws right or justifiable, he argued. According to him, the overriding principle of law recognizes that whoever owns the land owns everything on top of it. And as such, any extant constitutional or statutory provisions that runs contrary to the common law principle is nothing but bad, immoral, exploratory, and exploitative. He further went on to remind the former president that Nigeria operates a federal system of government, and federalism is fiscal and plural. Now joining us from Yanagoa and Kaduna to further the conversation on the age-old argument for and against the quest for resource control by the people of the Niger Delta are Professor Benjamin Okaba, President, Ijo National Congress, and Hakeem Baba Ahmed, spokesperson of the Northern Elders Forum. Good morning, gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Now, let's dive right in, shall right, good we? Good morning. Compliments of the season. Oh, I wish you the no. same. Thank you, sir. Now, let's dive right into the argument. I'm going to start with you, Professor Okaba. I'd like your take on President Obasanjo's position, which is really a, a bit of a non-issue. Anybody who can read can read Section 44, Subsection 3 of the 1999 Constitution. We all know that all mineral resources are vested in the federal government. But his point seems to be that that is the way it ought to be. His point seems to put that a full stop rather than a comma so that the conversation can continue to where we ought to be. What is your take? OK, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Yes, uh, in this uh, intervention, we are not particular about the uh, performance metrics of OBJ uh, and uh, its uh, self dignifying posturing as the Messiah of uh, Nigeria. Uh, I want to see OBJ as representing a, a, a class of persons who have actually fought so hard to sustain a system that is colonial, a system that has, uh, is uh, military driven, uh, a colonial, a system that serves the hegemonic interest against the interests of, of other people, of the rest of Nigeria. Uh, so it is on that point want to say yes. One, when you talk about the origin of the discussion, uh, we need to go back to the, the December 13, 14 uh, arguments, where OBJ stated clearly that uh, any, as in as much as Nigeria exists, any mineral any resource found anywhere belongs to the entire Nigeria. Uh, it was at that point the secretary of INC interjected him and reminded him that 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 there is injustice, there is injustice. Mineral resources belong to the people, and that remains our position. Uh, now OBJ makes reference to the. Constitution. I want the 1963, 1960, 1979, 1999 Constitution uh, and ask the question whether, whether uh, the Constitution provision uh, is said or implied that mineral allocated in any part of Nigeria belongs to the location. That was the question he raised in the open letter to uh, Park Clark. Uh, 
I want to say that uh, the reference to the Constitution is, uh, is a second thought in the first place. Then, secondly, that uh, the colonial presidents, uh, starting from uh, 1916 Mineral Ordinance, 1946 Mineral Ordinance, were copiously copied into the subsisting constitutions of the country on resource management and all that. I must understand the political economy of colonialism, which is about exploitation. Now, we're expected by independence, which was by way of some agreement that we're coming together as a federation. And in doing so, we have to respect the capacity, the capacity of all the federated units to be guaranteed ownership and as ownership of their resources and make contributions to the center. So the, if you look at the 1963 constitution very caref caref uh, uh, carefully, uh, you see that there's no, there's no section that vests ownership of, ownership of land on the federal government. In fact, uh, where it even states that in the uh, item 25, that land mineral resources can be legislated upon as exclusive list. You can see that that alone contradicts the fundamental principles of federalism. And uh, the section 140 that we talk about makes provision for derivation. Derivation is a 50% of whatever is gotten from a, a location is given back to the people. Now, that is an implication or implies recognition of ownership. Because if you say the resources belong to everybody, to all every part, so why must you give part of it to where the resource was sourced? Wow. Why must you, so there's okay. implicit recognition of ownership of resources. We know that it was a 1979 constitution that's military driven, a, a, a constitution that is against the, the okay. wish of people, a constitution that has stifled the development okay. of Nigeria, okay. 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 that injected a clause that says that all lands in Nigeria belong to the country. Okay. So Professor. what we are saying, just like the lawyer you, uh, you, you mentioned earlier, uh, said, look, the law of a nation or okay. the constitution, okay. constitution itself is okay. a charter. Okay, Professor Kaba. It's a, sh Professor it's a Kaba, shatter. I, I and cannot in any way anticipate or take care of all the exigencies. Okay. And that is why it's subject to, to reviews. Okay. To reviews upon reviews. Okay, Professor and Kaba. We have come as Ijo people. Professor Kaba, can you hear me? Great. We have come as Ijo people to say that let us go back to the very basis. Of, of, our, of our coming together, which is 100% resource ownership. I will make contributions by way of pay, paying of taxes to the country. In fact, when he also referred to okay. federalism, fe, fe, uh, uh, okay. uh, uh, democratic nations all uh, over the world. I, I'll have that. to come in here, Professor Kaba, because we have to also get other points of view to it. Uh, Dr. Akim Baba, I would like your response to what Professor Kaba stated. And also, I'd like to ask, you know, in all of this, why is it that we even have a land use act that says power uh, of, you know, governance of the land is vested in the hands of the state governor, but the resource in that same land goes to the federal government, but it's, the land is supposed to belong to the state government. Why does the resource go to the federal government? That's as stated in our last land use act of 78. Dr. Uh, well, first of all, I, I have the, the, I have the disadvantage of not hearing what my, um, my 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 brother said uh, I didn't get a word he said. Uh, for some technical reasons, I've been cut off. Um, let let me let me just say this. Um, 
this this debate uh, or quarrel going on between President Obasanjo and uh, and one or two other people from the Niger Delta I, I, is is misplaced, is antiquated, um, and and the the context the context is entirely wrong. This is the kind of discussions we've, we've had for the last 30, 40, 50 years ago. And we have no business discussing um, these resources, it's ours, it's not, it doesn't belong to the rest of the country. Um, we, 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 what we need to do is to have a national discussion on the way we, we generate resources um, of the nation, and, and we, 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 sh we share those resources. Uh, uh, but if, if you limit it to an issue where um, a particular community feels uh, that it has to raise uh, its own issues in isolation, uh, then every community will raise issues uh, that are peculiar to them. Uh, from the Northern Elders Forum, we are working with uh, uh, with other groups from the rest of the country to try and see if we can put matters of this nature on the table on our own and and try and see if we can discuss them. Um, every inch of Nigeria has resources. Every inch of Nigeria can lay the same claim that uh, the Niger Delta is is lay on on a Western asset, which is oil and gas. Um, and this is not the kind of thing that a nation looking for a new lease of life uh, should, be, we should be devoting uh, unnecessary time and attention on. Uh, in the next 10, 20 years, oil, oil and gas will be w virtually uh, irrelevant to both the national and the global economy. But there are resources in this country that will, will last for as long as uh, this country uh, lasts. And, and this argument about this is ours and we must keep everything, they are legitimate to the degree that people feel that um, um, in the process of uh, utilizing national resources, we suffer injuries, we, we are entitled to certain advantages. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but if you push this argument too far, uh, <laughs> the North will remind the rest of the country that the, the present federal capital territory used to be Northern Territory. Uh, every inch of the 250,000 kilometers uh, uh, it is uh, used to be part of the North. Uh, the military took it away, turned it into a federal asset, and and today, 80 or 90 percent of the property in the federal capital territory does not belong to Northerners. It belongs to Nigerians from the southern part of the country. So, what happens if if uh, northern communities all or people who who used to live in in the FCT now come up and say, um, we want special compensation, we want special treatment um, for 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 the land that was taken away in 1976 by the military and handed over to the rest of Nigeria. Um, what happens when we eventually find the resources to fully exploit the gold and the diamond? and a lot of the resources that exist in other parts of the country. What about the water resources? What about uh, many, many assets? What about the land that we do? 80% of the food that is eaten in this country is produced in the northern part of the country. So I don't think this is an argument that should be limited to President Obasanjo and Chief Clark and a few other people. We, we, we should sit down when, if government is not going to allow um, a genuine productive dialogue on the way the federation works, um, uh, we should readdress the regeneration of national wealth, distribution of national, 
We should do so ourselves. If this administration is unwilling to um, to pay attention to to the values of this, let's wait for another administration. The world is not going to end with the President Obama, uh, Buhari's administration. President Buhari may be hostile, or this administration may be hostile to opening up some of these sensitive but ultimately necessary debates, and we can do that later. Um, as I said, we, we are willing, we are open, and we are looking forward to sitting down with Pandev and Afeni Feria and Ohaneze, not just to discuss assets uh, declaration, I mean assets, use of assets, but also um, a lot more things that are central to the survival of the country in the future. But Ahmed, that is precisely the point. The point is that the issue is much larger than saying Section 43, Subsection 3 states that all mineral sources are vested in the federal government, and that's that. The point is, as you have said, every inch of this country has resources to share with the rest of the country, and that conversation has to happen. The Niger Delta is advocating for their own resources, Zamfara should advocate for their gold, Ondo for their bitumen, and everybody should have a greater stake, a greater sense of ownership with what they are sharing with the Commonwealth. And it boils down to resource control, it boils down to restructuring. And that has reared its ugly head in today's headlines. With with the governor of Katsina State advocating self-help, that citizens of Katsina are severely under-policed with a meager 3,000 policemen to cater to them. It's ineffective. The citizens of Katsina have been run roughshod by who he describes as sons of our neighbors. Therefore, they should arm themselves. What do you think of the governor's suggestion? I'll be honest with you, I'm still trying to get my head around the, what exactly Governor Masari said. Uh, this is uh, a chief executive, a governor of a state sworn to defend the constitution. He's, uh, he was, used to be a former speaker uh, of the um, uh, House, uh, Federal House of uh, Representatives. Uh, I, I would rather see and hear exactly what he said, because when a governor says to his citizens, um, quite possibly not for the first time, Find guns and uh, and defend yourselves. Uh, that that's the kind of statement that that really uh, keeps you awake at, at night. Because if we have descended to the level where we now begin a do-it-yourself defense strategy in this country, ministry minister of of defense says stop running away from bandits, fight back. Governor of Kazakhstan states find guns. Well, I'll find you guns and I'll give you guns to fight back the bandits. Then that's the end of this country. The bottom line is that there is a massive failure to manage our national security. Uh, we need to sit down uh, again, <laughs> go back to the Syrian doubt, which this administration is particularly allergic to or reluctant to, to even address, and address some of these issues. Restructuring is a perfectly legitimate and honorable thing to do. The a federation is a living thing. Every once in a while, it shows weaknesses, it shows problems. Why can't, it's our federation. It doesn't belong to the government. It's our federation. We should sit down and discuss. And there should be nothing off the table, absolutely nothing. But because there are people who believe that the moment you start talking about restructuring, the moment you start talking about policing, the moment you start talking about uh, sharing of assets, or generation of assets, that means you are looking for trouble. Um, uh, so long as those people have this kind of mindset, we are going to continue to sit on our problems, and those problems will, will grow bigger. The North has massive issues that it wants to discuss with other Nigerians on restructuring, on the management of the economy, on security. We would love to do that. If the government is not going to provide an avenue, a facility, or, or even the, um, uh, a mindset that says, hey, listen, you're Nigerians, you can discuss your problems. Then we should do so. And that's what the point I was making. There are issues where we want to discuss with the rest of the country. We're talking with each other. I was there when this argument with between President Obasanjo and the president of the uh, Ijo National Congress started over the use of the word uh, the oil, our oil, our oil, our gas, our oil and gas, and our oil and gas. And the exchanges there were, were interesting. But the value of it, 
of that discussion is that it is now triggering a, 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 a discussion that really not ought to be between President Obasanjo and, uh, and um, uh, Chief Clark. And uh, people like uh, Governor Masari have no business um, telling their citizens, find guns and, find your, and fight yourselves. I mean, Governor Masari, of all the governors in this country, has, should have more access to President Buhari uh, and, and um, Minister of Justice Malami. These are people who, who, who would ordinarily say to him, even over the phone, um, Your Excellency, be very careful about talking to people about um, finding guns. Um, we know there are guns all over the place because these bandits have access to them. Um, but there, there are also laws. Uh, citizens can't just simply procure guns and, and, and start chasing bandits. Uh, so there's this, this a vacuum that has been exploited by the silence or indifference of the central administration in a federation that should be responsible and responsive to the federating units. If those federating units cannot find the sympathy or the empathy or the understanding of the center, then they should talk to each other. Um, I, I, I take a longer time view of this country. We don't have to do everything at the same time. We can fix this country, but we need to be mature. We need to, be, uh, we need to look at the long-term effect of this. But most of all, we need to survive between now and when this administration of President Buhari comes to an end. This is very important. We need to stick together as one country. We need to lower the tempo. We need to lower the tensions. And we need to talk to each other. And there's nothing wrong with talking to each other. Dr. Baba Ahmed, you talked about the fact that when people put the conversation on restructuring on the table, a lot of people don't want to listen, don't want to listen to it. And I'd like uh, uh, Professor Kaba to answer this first, and you can come answer yours afterwards that a lot of people don't want to listen to the conversation. Why is that the case? Because a lot of Nigerians will argue that the reason why they voted in the APC government was because they had restructuring in their manifesto. Why is that the case, Professor Kaba? If you can answer quickly, then we'll have uh, Dr. Papa Hametu to talk about that. OK. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, the, the foundation uh, uh, to that is that uh, the Nigerian question, uh, so constitution uh, is a product of an or representing representative drafting. And uh, so to a large extent, most of these provisions are military driven. Uh, so the constitution is fraud, is satanic, and it has not served anybody any good. In fact, the 1999 constitution is the foundation for the collapsing Nigeria. Every fragment of Nigeria, the economy, educational system, the, the infrastructure, all collapsing. It is a, so reforms, reforms cannot do, they cannot salvage the situation. We need an overall, overall restructuring. So when you talk about restructuring, it's about laying a foundation because uh, OBJ talks about reforms, believing that that will help to, to bring back Nigeria, normalcy to Nigeria. But we know that uh, in a, under a constitution that is faulty, a constitution that as though uh, those, is not people driven, a constitution that was horridly put together uh, some few, few weeks, months to his, his ascendancy as president for the second time, cannot do us any good. So the various ag agitations across the country uh, uh, are, are clear evidence that, look, for Nigeria to work, Nigeria as a nation to work, we must do away with this constitution and get back to the very basis, get back to the very basis for which we're brought together. And in a federation, resource ownership, fiscal federalism is paramount. And any constitution that talks about federalism that does not recognize ownership of resources. Because going forward, when you talk about uh, ownership of resources and people not uh, uh, government owns and all that, what makes a country, what makes a state, what makes the federation is the people. If today, for instance, Bayasa ceases to be in Nigeria, everything about Bayasa 
is taken to whatever country. Have we forgotten the Bakasi situation? Have we forgotten the Bakasi situation? So if though the constitution has not clearly stated uh, issues of, if like in section two uh, of the constitution, where we talk about we operate as a federation and states, communities are not involved, but it's implied because the cons community, communities make up the, the, the states, communities make up the country. So how do you take resources that belong to a place without recognizing it? So, so that can, in itself is an aberration. So the government, the APC government talked about restructuring and people believed. And we are all surprised that, well, after deceiving Nigerians to, to thinking that uh, with a, because we all believe that the restructuring, that will work. And say nothing about it, uh, even after the air fires uh, 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 report. We are all shocked. But the question is that where in this country is actually benefiting from the same system? The usual saying is that, well, uh, those people who don't believe in restructuring and benefit, it's not true. Every part of this country is suffering. Uh, those persons that have decided to take over all the power and believe that power belongs to them, they have the greatest level of instability and insecurity. Those who believe that they take all the resources, have the greatest number of local government area in a fraudulent system. They have, that is the poverty headquarter of, uh, of, uh, of Nigeria. Those who believe that they have, must have all the service shifts to themselves. They also produce the highest level of criminality. So it, it has, and even to the extent of exporting poverty to other parts of the country. So it is not the 1999 constitution remains the apparatus. 1999 constitution remains the problem. 1999 constitution is the reason why we are here we are today. And those who are sustaining or are willing, fighting willingly, uh, tirelessly to sustain the status quo, are doing it for self-seeking purposes to protect their, their hegemonic interest. And the time we get back to either we restructure or we allow people, allow individuals who feel dissatisfied with the current system to seek self-determination. If not, like we said earlier, if you make restructuring impossible, you will make this, the, 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 the rebundling of Nigeria inevitable. Dr. Dr. Baba Ahmed, I'm not sure if they fixed the issue and you can hear Professor Akaba, but I also have a question for you. Earlier you said the North is willing to discuss, and if the government will not provide that forum, you know, groups like, you know, Northern Elders Forum, Ijo National Congress, all the groups around the country should get together and have the discussion. However, we are still hamstrung as a people by the fact that all the talking in the world, we can talk to we're blue in the face. We cannot actually effect amendments to the Constitution without the constituted authorities. So I want your take on the quality of leadership that we're facing in Nigeria now, what this um, discussion has thrown up, the fact that we have a man, a former president, in the person of um, President Obasanjo, who is so wedded to a failed status quo, and he's not the only one who seems to be completely enchanted by this 99 constitution that does nothing, serves none of us. What do you think is the quality of leadership that we're facing, that we're faced with in this country? And what can we do as Nigerians as a general election approaches? The last time Nigerians took the APC at their word, including yourself, and we believed the promises of change, restructuring, and you know, we were failed. What do we actually do to move forward? Well, first of all, I think we are building, uh, we're attempting to build a new nation using old broken blocks. Um, listening to my brother from the Niger Delta there, um, the only thing I would say as far as the North is concerned is that we're not going to be dragged into arguing with fellow Nigerians over what is wrong with the Federation. Clearly, we need to restructure the country. How we do it, uh, where we do it, the degree to which we do it, and when we do it, um, it's not entirely up to us, but we can wait out a government that says no to restructuring and the country will survive. And uh, there will be a time when we put all these issues on the table. The problem is when you begin to pose the problem in an either or. Do it now, do it the way we want, or we leave the country. Um, and if you begin to speak in that kind of language, you, you give the rest of the country ultimatum 
that that is uh, that that is counterproductive. Uh, as I said before, uh, everybody has issues. So, what I think what is important is to recognize the fact that President Obasanjo is not the only one who is talking about constitutional amendments. We we have a, a National Assembly right now looking into. Um, issues in our constitution that should be amended. We've expressed our reservations regarding the boundaries they've drawn on that. We don't know whether this will end up in the same way that the, the government is treating the reforms of the electoral process. Um, here in the North, we are taking a long, longer term view. Um, we have very serious acute problems, security, economy. Um, we, are, we, are, we are dying. From, from poverty and from huge debts. We don't know when we'll pay, great-grandparents will pay. Um, but we, st we still have faith that if we can speak uh, uh, as Northerners and we can speak with the rest of Nigerians and keep out the mischief makers, including the government that simply says, you can talk to each other if you want, and they have to because we, we can, we do have a right to speak to, to each other. Um, and those, and those, this kind of language that says, "Give us everything now," or, or we want, to, we don't want to be part of Nigeria. If you want everything, then you don't want to be part of Nigeria. Um, every part of the country can say the same thing. It's, it's language that is easy to use, uh, and every part of Nigeria is sitting on something else that somebody else needs. So. We really we used to we need to recognize the fact that whether we like it or not, this country is bound not just by history, not by by living together as an, an experience, but also by the fact that God has put under around or in or, or under or around us everything else that everybody needs. This country can find a solution to this. Uh, arguments, not permanent solution, would we'll always have arguments about resources. But argue, we, can, we can solve substantially the arguments of, uh, oh, this is mine, or I must have as much of that, and you must have as little of this. We can. We, we are a very rich country. What we lack, where we're poor, is the leadership. And this is where it's important in 2023 to make sure that we elect people that are different from the guys now that are pretending that everything is fine. Anywhere you hear things like restructuring or resource allocation or review of the resources, those are troublemakers. They are not troublemakers. These are the genuine Nigerians who believe that the nation needs to be addressed. It's our country. It's our constitution. And the structures under which we live, if it's not working, we must be able to say so. We don't need an apology. We don't need to apologize to anybody. And again, I go back to the issue. If the government is not going to provide a forum, and clearly it is not, if the, why, why don't people like my brother who just spoke from the Niger Delta and us here in the north and uh, Pandev and Afeni Ferry and Oanizi and other groups in the country, why don't we sit in Abuja or in Oka or in, uh, in Lagos uh, and talk about this? And if we, if, if we don't have the powers to push through constitutional amendments, um, that we believe are important and are central to the survival of this country. Let's vote in a government that is primarily committed to restructuring this country, together, as a nation, because it's the one issue that unites all of us. We must do this. The failure to do this and diverting attention by getting us to fight each other rather than to fight the real problem, the real problem is a government that has closed itself off they're, and they don't, they're not will, willing to listen. Don't waste your energy. Don't waste your time. There's no reason why the North should be fighting the Niger Delta over oil and gas. None. Absolutely none. We can t discuss this issue. There's no reason why anybody will threaten to leave this country because they, doesn't have, they don't have 100% of what they want. There is a future, and this future is not ours. It belongs to our children. And these children don't even know the, the nuances and the implications of this debate. To the bottom line, the North recognizes the fact that if Nigeria is going to survive, we need to adopt a longer time view. We need to be responsible. We need to be um, uh, responsive 
to the yearnings of the need of young, particularly younger Nigerians. We need to be um, visionary in terms of the way we, we see how this, these things can be shot at. And, and to be perfectly honest, some of the leaders who speak for ethnic groups have no business speaking for ethnic groups. We don't. People who believe that once there is fire, the best thing you do with that fire is to put more petrol on it, they're not helping this country. No, certainly not. Well, thank you so much for your time this morning, Professor Akaba and Dr. Baba Ahmed.